our Father in heaven, salamat po sa pagdidisiplina ninyo uh, through your word and through uh, the conviction ng Holy Spirit sa heart namin. So Lord, ngayon po, as we uh, uh, walk through a uh, familiar uh, story, dalain ko na you give us a fresh uh, word from you. May you continue to expose kung ano pa yung uh, natitira na kasalanan sa puso namin, and there are many. And help, help, help us see and experience the transforming power of the gospel at work in our hearts. So, Father, this is our prayer. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Merong uh, isang uh, website na naglista sila ng uh, 15 legendary pastors. Okay, so sino sa inyo yung nangangarap na balang araw ay uh, malagay sa listahan na yon? 15 legendary pastors. Pakita sa kamay. Uh, wala, okay. Uh, meron. <laughs> uh, pero hindi pa pala tapos yung, uh, hindi pa complete yung uh, title na binigay ko. Uh, yung nakalagay dun sa headline na yon ay 15 legendary pastors who fell from grace. And so nakalista doon ng uh, maraming uh, pangalan and some of us, some of them ay uh, kilala natin. Pero yung mga kasalanan na ginawa nila like Merong nga uh, na-involve sa uh, gay sex scandal. Merong na-involve sa uh, molestation. And one of them accused of assaulting 30 women. At meron doon, merong uh, multiple affairs. And some of them uh, struggled sa uh, sexual addiction. And merong na-accused ng uh, plagiarism scandal. And may na ng emotional abusiveness, misogyny, or a hatred of women. And some fell because of uh, misuse of uh, church funds. So kung mabalita natin yung uh, uh, mga ganong uh, scandal, kung sa entertainment industry ay hindi ganun ka-shocking. Pero if... Uh, they came from a pastoral ministry. E iba yung uh, shocked na nararamdaman natin. And one of the reasons bakit we find it uh, shocking and scandalous ay parang we, uh, we grew up or sa, sa mindset natin sa church or ng mga Christians, uh, people think of us pastors na parang tayo ay uh, supermen o holy men. And yes, we need to strive for holiness. Pero some, somehow, akala ng iba na meron tayong parang special immunity against uh, temptation na hindi tayo magfo-fall katulad ng iba. Pero one of the... Uh, one of the benefit ng mga ganitong uh, news na nababalitaan natin is for us to realize na every pastor, kahit bata kang pastor, o matanda ka ng pastor, or if you are a young believer or a mature believer, na we are in desperate need of grace every day. We are still sinners. Although merong mga mag-object na hindi mo dapat tawagin na ang Christian o kaya lalo na ang pastor na sinner. Okay, but that's the, the truth. You, you might object dun sa label na yon na tawagin ka na sinner, but we cannot deny yung fact na we still sin, we still fall into temptation. And kahit na pastor tayo, hindi natin pwede sabihin na we just fall into just uh, small, little, or respectable sins na katulad ng sinasabi ni uh, Jerry Bridges. But we have this capacity, and this is a, a very fearful capacity sa heart natin to fall into sin big time. Like si David. Uh, by, by the grace of God, like David, we can also be called uh, a man after God's own heart. Pero like David, 
we have this capacity to break the heart of God. And even big time. So we are familiar with the story. Sa 2 Samuel, chapter 11 at chapter 12. And we are very familiar with the story na nangyari sa kanya with Bathsheba. A very familiar story. Pero if you are following yung uh, narrative ng story ni David, if you are following yung, uh, yung kanyang rise to power, yung kanyang rise to popularity, yung uh, mga victories and mga successes niya, nakakadismaya na mabalitaan na ito yung nangyari sa kanya. But at the same time, it is astonishing na yung Bible ay ganito ka-brutally honest sa kasalanan na isang hari na pinili ng Diyos. And we will be, and this is my prayer for us uh, ngayon, na we will be more astonished kung gaano kalaki yung biyaya ng Diyos publicly exposed before us through this story. Okay, so, chapter 11. Chapter 11, verse 1. So, so opening pa lang ng story, we can already see a problem brewing. Di ba? So, in the spring of the year, the time when kings go out to battle, David sent Joab. So, lagi naman nakikipaglaban si David. Hindi siya yung uh, king na uh, just uh, issuing uh, commands. Sige, makipaglaban kayo. Sige, girahin ninyo sila. He's, uh, he was fighting, leading them in battle. And then, this was the time when kings go out to battle, pero we, we wonder, bakit but David remained at Jerusalem? Wala namang masama magpahinga kung napapagod ka. <laughs> Wala namang masama mag-sabbatical sa ministry. That's, that's good. But yung uh, time na to sa story, this is not, not the time to rest. Na for David and for many of us, na we need to realize na meron tayong mas importanteng laban at merong mas importanteng laban ang kinakaharap ni Haring David. This, 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 not a, uh, this battle is not fought outside, but inside his heart. Araw-araw ang laban na to. And this is a battle. Yes, si David yung king ng Israel. But yung battle, yung uh, everyday war sa heart niya ay yung uh, battle kung uh, sino ang mauupo sa trono ng kanyang buhay. And we must be ready and we must be armed to fight this battle every day. Yung laban po natin sa kasalanan, yung laban natin against temptation, there's no rest. You can say na pagating sa ministry, you are hardworking and you are a workaholic. But in terms of guarding what matters most, we can be very lazy and slothful. Diba sabi sa Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Above all else, guard your heart. Diba? Every, every Sunday, we are giving a sermon sa church natin as if we are equipping them, sending them to do battle from Monday to Saturday. Pero, pagating naman ng uh, man, uh, Sunday night or Monday morning, we are not too careful do sa mga movies na pinapanood natin or the pictures we look at. And wag natin isipin na maliit lang yung kasalanan natin. Hindi ito kasing scandalous na, baso, hindi, hindi naman na uh, yung mga binanggit mo kanina na mga scandal, hindi naman yun yung mga ginagawa ko. So, maliit lang. And some of us, ang tingin sa kasalanan natin ay maliit lang. And some of us, parang we let our guards down kasi oh, feeling natin we are in control o kaya parang tapos na yung laban, we are already victorious. Yes, we have victory in Christ. Pero kapag nagiging kampante tayo sa sarili natin, yung unang-unang kalaban natin ay yung pride na nasa heart natin. Iba yung warning ni Paul sa so 1 uh, Corinthians chapter uh, 10 verse 12 na if you think that you stand, mag-ingat ka lest you fall. Ang kayabangan, sabi sa Proverbs 16.18, ay humahantong sa kapahamakan at ang nagmamataas ay babagsak. Kung si Haring David ay bumagsak, huwag mong isipin na, na hindi yan mangyayari sa iyo. At kapag meron ka man nababalitaan ng mga paso who uh, resigned or quit sa ministry because of uh, moral failure, don't ever say to yourself, it can never happen to me. 
Lahat ng mga pastor na nahulog sa kasalanan at one point in their life, sinamit din nila sa sarili nila, it can never happen to me. And yet, it happened to them, it happened to David. At huwag mo isipin na yung, ah, maliit lang naman kasalanan ko, envy, or uh, self-righteousness, or laziness. And maybe wala pang ginagawang kasalanan si David dito sa verse 1. Pero by not being careful, it leads to more despicable sins for a king, for a pastor, and for men after God's own heart. So ano nangyari? Verse 2. Isang hapon, so pagkatapos ng kanyang uh, siesta, bumangon si David, naglakad-lakad siya sa itaas ng kanyang palasyo, at may nakita siyang isang babae na naliligo sa kabilang bahay. Maganda, napakaganda, pinagnasaan niya. And then verse 3, And David sent and inquired about the woman. So tiningnan niya yung uh, profile pic sa Facebook. Kahit may asawa na siya. But si iba pala yung pangalan. Kaso, married yung status. And na-discover niya na asawa pa ng isa sa kanyang pinaka-magigiting, pinaka-loyal, at pinaka-faithful na soldier. Ang pangalan na Uriah the Hittite. So nagsimula sa pagtingin, naging lustful desire sa heart niya, David already committed adultery in his heart even before committing adultery. Tulad na sabi ng Panginoong Isa Kristo. So, pinatawag niya yung babae, then they had sex, and she became pregnant. Undeniably, si David yung may kasalanan. Kinuha ni David yung hindi para sa kanya. Maraming pribilehyo at malawak ang kapangyarihan ng isang hari, pero ang paglabag sa malinaw na utos ng Diyos ay hindi kasali doon. We have a lot of privileges na binigay sa atin ng Diyos sa ministry, but to, uh, to fail to submit to His authority, to dis disregard His law, kuhanin natin yung mga bagay na hindi naman para sa atin, that's not part of that. And huwag natin isipin na uh, part of our privilege is immunity against sin. Sabi ni Garrett Kell, sabi niya, whether we are a pastor, or a president, or housewife, we are all in danger of being wooed, outwitted, and overpowered by sin. Yet, we often do not feel the danger until it is too late. We do not often feel the danger until it is too late. And you warning sa atin ni James, sa James chapter 1, verse 16. But each pastor is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brother pastors. So, nagkakasalan tayo. Even we commit sexual sins, katulad ng ginawa ni David. And what is worse? We try to justify our sinful actions. Kakasala tayo, and we try to justify our sinful actions. May mga times na sinasabi natin ang sarili natin na 30 minutes lang naman, or one hour lang naman of watching pornography, and it won't hurt me. Or, uh, pagod naman ako sa weekend ministry. Bakit? Pwede ko naman siguro na i-reward yung sarili ko of indulging in uh, this kind of uh, pleasures. Or even justify na ayaw kasi ng asawa ko eh. So we try to uh, satisfy ourselves physically, uh, sexually. Or kung ikaw ay uh, single, you try to uh, justify it na hindi, na hindi naman, wala namang mangyayari o kaya wala namang makakalam, hindi naman malalaman sa church namin. We try to justify our sinful actions. So, so yung question for us, pastors, kahit mag-disagree ka dun sa pastor as sinner, yung question din na sa atin na, are you sinning? Nagkakasala ka pa ba? Nahuhulog ka pa ba sa tukso? It's already a given. But yung question sa atin, what are you going to do about it? Nagkasala ka, nahuhulog ka sa kasalanan, 
and you're still struggling with sin, kahit pastol ka na, kahit graduate ka na ng Master of Divinity, meron pa rin impurity sa minds mo, what are you going to do about it? So, throughout the story, si Batsiba ay a silent character. Except, nung sabihin niya sa verse 5, ito lang yung words na sinabi niya throughout this story. I am pregnant. And it has a lot of repercussions throughout the rest of the story. And it changed the course of history. Natatakot ako kapag uh, tahimik yung asawa ko. Uh, na sense ko na there's something is wrong. Di ba? Kapag uh, tinatanong natin yung asawa natin na sobrang tahimik, ah, maghapon na tahimik, walang sinasabi. Uh, sweetheart, uh, may problema ba? Tapos hindi kumikibo. Oh, okay lang, okay lang. Wala naman problema. And I feel na mayroon akong nagawang uh, kasalanan. May, mayroon isang araw na may siguro several days na tahimik yung asawa ko. And then yung pala, she found out. She found out. So, one year na kami na married noon. Ay nasa, nasa seminary ako noon. She found out na I was struggling with pornography. Na simula high school and even kahit naging uh, leader na ako sa church, kahit nag-aral na ako sa seminary, and even when I started as a pastor, nakala ko na walang... Uh, Walang makakalam, and I was so afraid of uh, confessing my sins. Then one day, yung words yung sinabi na, I know, it changed, it changed everything. Yung uh, araw na kinatatakot ko na malaman ng asawa ko, it changed everything. No matter how hard we try to hide our sins, we cannot hide. So kung nagkasala tayo like David, dapat aminin natin. Aminin natin sa Diyos. Dapat humingi na tayo ng tawad sa Diyos. Yung sana yung ginawa niya. Humingi ng tawad sa Diyos, humingi ng tawad kay Batsiba, humingi ng tawad kay Uraya na asawa ni Batsiba, at humingi ng tawad sa bansang Israel. Pero yung karaniwan, hanggat may tatago, itatago natin. Lalo na kung nakakahiya, malalaman ng iba, it's so risky, parang yung uh, ministry natin as a pastor is at, is at risk. But instead of taking responsibility for our sinful actions, we try to deny it, we try to hide it, we try to cover it up. Ganun yung ginawa ni David. So, anong ginawa niya? Simula sa verse 6. So, David sent word to Joab. Sabi niya, send me Uriah the Hittite. And then, uh, mula dun sa pakikipaglaban, umuwi si Uraya. Tapos kunwari pa si David na naumusta, kumusta na kayo? Pero wala naman talaga siyang concern kay Uriah. His only concern is to protect his reputation. So ang ginawa niya, kunwari pinapawin niya sa bahay para sipingan yung asawa niya, tapos akalain na yung uh, pinagubuti si Batsiba ay anak ni Uriah. He's doing all of this out of concern sa sarili niyang reputasyon. And twice siya na ginawa kasi every time na sinasabi niya si Uriah, hindi siya umuwi sa kanila. Buti pa si Uriah. He was not an Israelite. He was a Hittite. But he was a faithful soldier ni David. Para sa mga sundalo, malinaw yung utos ng uh, Diyos. Kapag pupunta kayo sa labanan, you should not have sex with your wives, although legitimate naman na nagawin nila, pero they will become ritually impure kapag ginawa nila yun. Pero kahit pinawi siya ni David, hindi niya ginagawa. Bakit? He still considered himself as on duty as a soldier. Merong laban. Hindi dapat tuminto. Hindi dapat magpahinga. Buti, buti pa siya, faithful sa tungkulin niya bilang sundalo. Pero si David, unfaithful. Buti pa siya, titiisin niya yung hirap sa pagkipaglaban sa mga kaaway ng Israel. Pero si David, nagpampakasarap na makuha yung nais niya, samantalang yung mga sundalo niya ay nakikipaglaban. So, yung plano ni David to cover up yung kanyang kasalanan, naging successful ba or failure? Fail. So, when we fail, sa mga times na we try to cover up yung kasalanan natin, and na-discover yung uh, 
uh, browser history natin sa internet or kaya ay uh, merong nakaalam ng ginagawa nating kasalanan, it's an, another opportunity na binibigay sa atin ng Panginoon to respond in confession and repentance. But our heart is so stubborn, gagawin pa rin natin ang lahat ng gagawin natin para matakpan yung kasalanan natin. And leading others, yung ibang tao pa, yung nasasaktan. Like ang nangyari kay Uriah. So, kinaumagaan, merong memo na pinadala si David kay Joab. Ah, kay Uriah. Na ibigay kay Joab. So, daladala yun ni Uriah. Pero nakalaman, nakalagay doon sa sulat na yon ay yung instruction kung paano mapapatay si Uriah. Ilalagay siya sa in front of the battle. Nandun yung pinakamatinding labanan. Hayaan siya na mamatay. And so, si Uriah, as a faithful soldier, daladala niya yung memo na yon na walang kamalay-malay na yun daladala niya ay yung death warrant para sa kanya. So, nakating yung kay Joab. Ano nangyari? He was killed. Grabe yung anger sa heart ni David. Na pati yung loyal soldier niya ay ipapapatay niya. Nagkasala na siya ng adultery, but he still tried to cover, cover up yung adultery na yon with another sin, murder. Galit siya kay Uriah, hindi dahil sa ginawang kasalanan ni Uriah. Galit siya because he was being a hindrance sa plano niya, sa gusto niyang mangyari. And so for us, and for some of you, maybe you're struggling with anger sa heart niya. If you're an associate pastor, baka meron kang anger sa iyong uh, senior pastor for getting in the way of your dream for the ministry. Or kung ikaw pastor, meron kang anger sa mga leaders ng church for uh, lagi kang kinikriticize, laging nagdi-disagree sa mga plano mo. Gabi yung capacity ng heart natin, even Christians, even pastors, not just for lust, but also for murder. So, napatay na si Uriah. Tagumpay na si David sa kanyang plano. Pero sa halip na masolusyonan yung una niyang kasalanan, nagkapatong-patong na ang atraso niya sa Diyos. So, namatay si Uriah, nabalita ni Batsiba, nagluksa si Batsiba, and pagkatapos ng pagluluksa, ano sabi sa verse? Verse 27. David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. Yes, it brought pleasure to him. Nakuha niya kung ano yung gusto niya. Verse 27, but the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Literally, yung verse na yun, evil in the sight of the Lord. Pinasabi pa niya kay Zoab, doon sa nangyari, don't let this matter displease you. He's trying to encourage yung kanyang, yung kanyang uh, commander na wag ikalungkot yung pagkamatay ni Uriah. But yung displeasure na ibang tao, that, that was not his greatest problem. His greatest problem is God's displeasure dahil sa kanyang kasalanan. Ikinalungkot ng Diyos, itino, yung itinuring niyang mabuti. Dahil ito isang bagay na masama sa paningin ng Diyos. Ganyan po yung kasalanan. Nagsimula si David na suwayin yung ikasampung utos. Huwag mong pagnasahan ang asawa ng iba. And then he violated the seventh commandment. Thou shall not commit adultery. And then he violated the sixth commandment. Thou shall not murder. Na habang ang Diyos sa ginagawang mga scandalous behaviors ni David, Parang tahimik lang, parang walang ginagawa. And first time na nakita natin yung pangalan ng Diyos, so verse 27, the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. And then so, verse, uh, chapter 12. Ito na yung sisimulang ng Diyos na gawin to confront David sa kasalanan niya. And this, God's disciplinary action for David. Because God treats David as a son. 
And then ver verse 1, the Lord sent Nathan to David. Na, 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 uh, na observe niyo sa chapter 11? David sent. David sent. David sent. Now, David was using his authority, but yung grave abuse ng kanyang authority to commit sins. Pero this time, papakita ng Diyos who is really in authority. And God will use His authority to confront David of his sin at iparamdam sa kanya kung gaano kalaki yung kanyang awa at habag at pag-ibig kay David. Okay, so, pinadala niya si Nathan to confront David and then Nathan told David a story. Ano yung story? Meron dalawang lalaki, yung isa mayaman, maraming, uh, maraming baka, maraming uh, tupa, pero yung isa mahirap. Isa lang yung kanyang alaga na tupa, binili pa niya, simula pagkabata, pinapakain niya, pinalalaki, pinalaki at itinuturing na kanyang sariling anak. Isang araw, yung, lalaki, yung mayamang lalaki nagkaroon ng uh, bisita sa halip na pumatay ng uh, hayop na pag-aari niya para ihanda doon sa kanyang bisita, kinuha niya yung tupa ng lalaking mahira at yun ang kinatay at inihanda doon sa kanyang bisita. Very, very obvious kung sino yung tinutukoy ni Nathan doon. Very obvious. Sino yung tinutukoy? Sino yung lalaking mayaman? It's David. Na marami ng pag-aaray, marami kaya man, marami na nga siyang asawa at disappoint. Hindi lang isa, hindi lang dalawa. Sino yung lalaking mahirap? Si Uriah. Sino yung kumuha ng para, para, pag-aari ng lalaking mahirap at kinuha pa sa sarili niya ni Nakao and he abused his authority to satisfy his own pleasure. That's David. Nakita ba ni David yon? Alam niya na makasalanan siya. Alam niya na nagkasalanan siya. But he was blind to his own sin. And we, we are so blind kahit sa sarili nating kasalanan. Ano sabi ni David? Nagalit siya. Sabi niya sa verse 5, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. Tapos sinabi ni Nathan sa kanya, You are that man. You are the one who deserves to die. Ang dami nang binigay sa iyo ng Diyos. God has given you the kingdom. God has given you all your enemies. God has given you a lot of promises that your kingdom will be forever. God has given you a family. Kahit yung gusto mo na marami kang asawa, pinagbigyan ka ng Diyos. Kahit isa lang dapat yung maging asawa. Na lahat ng tinanggap ni David is grace from God. Na everything we have right now as pastors, they are grace from God. So in light of His grace, napakalaki ng kasalanan natin sa Kanya. Anong kasalanan ni David? It's not... Adultery, not murder. Yung pinakamalaki niyang kasalanan ay yung nasa ilalim ng kasalanan na yun. The sin beneath our sins. Verse 9, You despise the word of the Lord. Verse 10, You have despised me, sabi ng Panginoon. Verse 14, By this deed you have utterly scorned the Lord. Nasa atin na yung lahat dahil nasa atin na si Kristo. So in light of that, every sin, lahat ng kasalanan na gawin natin, however small ang tingin natin doon sa kasalanan na yon, they are a great offense against God who has been so gracious to us. Siya yung hinahamak natin, siya yung binabaliwala natin, siya yung itunuturing natin na walang kwenta, walang kwenta ang salita mo, walang kwenta ang pangako mo, walang kwenta ang utos mo, walang kwenta yung mga warnings mo. We do not say that aloud to God, but we feel that inside our hearts every time we sin. So we are great sinners. At ang laki ng parusa ng Diyos para sa atin ng mga makasalanan. Verses 10 to 12. You just take time to read that. Sinabi ng Diyos kay David, because you have committed murder, mayroon mga anak mo ang papatayin. And sino yung pinatay sa mga anak niya? 
Amnon chapter 13, Absalom chapter 18, Adonijah sa 1 Kings chapter 2. Because you have committed adultery, sabi ng Diyos, yung kahihiyan, yung kahalayan na ginawa mo, you will suffer the consequences of that. Meron kang magiging anak na publicly, publicly, will do these things before his time. And he's talking about Absalom. And you look at 2 Samuel chapter 16, Naging magsik si Absalom laban kay David at sa harap ng maraming tao, without shame, sinipingan niya yung mga asawa ni David, ng kanyang ama. So, nagpapatuloy, magpapatuloy yung skandal sa family ni David. Walang may tatagong lihim sa Diyos. Sa asawa natin, pwede natin itago. Sa ibang paso, pwede natin itago. Sa church natin, pwede natin itago. Pero kahit gaano, kaya kahit gaano kalaki yung kasalanan natin, wala tayong may tatago sa Diyos, aminin natin. Humingi tayo ng tawad sa Kanya. So kanina, uh, I shared yung time na uh, na-discover ng wife ko na I was really struggling with uh, pornography. So through the Ministry of Living Waters, Nagkaroon ako ng mga kaibigan through that small group na we can freely confess our sins. So inamin ko yung kasalanan ko sa asawa ko, inamin ko yung kasalanan ko sa ibang mga kapatid ko sa Panginoon. It was very hard for me. It took me a lot of weeks bago ko sabihin yung pinakamalalang kasalanan na nagawa ko which I'm very ashamed. Yung, grabe yung depth ng shame sa heart ko. Grabe yung fear sa heart ko. Pero nung sinabi ko yon, I experienced, when I started confessing that, even, even to our church, I started what Jared Wilson called gospel wakefulness. Nung inamin ko kung gaano kalaki ang kasalanan ko sa Diyos, Yun yung time that, that I experience kung gaano kalaki ang pag-ibig ng Diyos sa akin. Ano yung response ni David? Ano yung response niya? Verse 13. Very short. I have sinned against the Lord. This is not just saying sorry kasi nahuli na eh yung kasalanan niya eh. This is, this is not just saying sorry or becoming remorseful dahil sa consequences ng kasalanan. This is real, heart, humble repentance. We know Psalm 51. Di ba sabi Psalm 51? Ito yung uh, expanded version ng kanyang prayer of repentance. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Against you, you only have I sinned. Hindi niya pinabaliwala, hindi niya sinasabi na wala siyang kasalanan kay Uriah, wala siyang kasalanan kay Batsiba, wala siyang kasalanan sa Israel. Pero sinasabi niya na, Lord, Yung kasalanan ko first and foremost against you. Nagkasala ako sa iyo. I have offended you. I have rebelled against your authority. Yun ang kasalanan. And yun yung paghingi ng tawad sa kasalanan. That's true repentance. When we recognize na yung kasalanan na nagawa natin is not just a mistake. It's not just an affair. It's not just an, a fantasy. Hindi yung dahil tao lang tayo. Hindi yung dahil nagkakamali lang tayo. But we have offended God who saved us. So, when we confess our sins, wag lang natin sabihin na, yes, I look into pornography. Yes, I fantasize about other women. 
Yes, merong uh, anger sa heart ko. You all also confess yung unbelief under all those sins. Now, you fail to believe that God is great. You fail to believe that God is good. You fail to believe that God is sufficient for your every need. And here's the good news. When we confess, alam natin ito eh. Sinasabi natin ito sa prayer of confession natin when we lead our church a prayer. If you confess your sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so, ano yung response ng Diyos? Verse 13. Verse 13. Look at verse 13. Ano sabi ni David? I have sinned against the Lord. Tawag sabi ni Nathan. Sabi ni Nathan, the Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. Ang kabayaran ng kasalanan ay kamatayan. Hindi lang isa, kundi patong-patong ang kasalanan ni David sa Diyos. He deserves to die. And we all deserve to die. We all deserve God's judgment dahil sa mga kasalanan natin. And then, sasabihin ng Diyos, the Lord has put away your sin. You just imagine. Just imagine. Sa isang courtroom. Tapos merong judge dito, tapos merong nililitis na rapist, o kaya plunderer, o kaya mass murderer. And sobrang, uh, sobrang uh, clear na nung proof na he was guilty. Tapos sasabihin ng judge, you're free to go. Malaya ka na. How, how would you react kung kayo yung witness doon? That's outrageous. That's a mockery of justice. Outrageous yung forgiveness ng Diyos sa atin in light of our sins against Him. Ang sinabi pa niya sa Proverbs 17.15, na kung sino yung magpapawalang sala sa nagkasala, o sino yung magpapawusa sa walang kasalanan, that's an abomination to the Lord. Tapos ito yung ginawa niya. Grabe kung gaano kaskandalos yung biyaya ng Diyos sa atin. I will just say to us, God has forgiven your sins. Ay, ito yung maskandalos. Tingin yung sumunod. Nevertheless, verse 14, because by this deed you have utterly scorned the Lord, the child who is born to you shall die. Namatay nga yung kanya anak. And what's, ano yung problem doon? What's the problem? Wala namang kamalay-malay yung kanyang anak doon sa kasalanan na ginawa niya kay Batsiba Tapos yung kanyang anak ang pinarusahan na mamatay. Is God, was God being unjust in this story? Si David yung dapat mamatay. Parang, he was, parang mas pinefavor ba ni David ang, ang Diyos, ng Diyos si David? Was God being unfair? This is God being gracious. Although it's hard for us to understand, pero you need to look beyond this story. Namatay yung anak ni David. And then, nagkaroon sila ulit ng anak ni Batsiba. Verse 24. Then David comforted his wife, Batsiba, and went into her and lay with her, and she bore a son. And he called his name Solomon. And the Lord loves Solomon and sent a message by Nathan the prophet, no, uh, bibigyan ng bagong pangalan si Solomon. At yung pangalan ay Shedidaya. Ang ibig sabihin, beloved of the Lord. And then when you look at Matthew chapter 1, Yung genealogy 
na kaniwan na binabypass natin kapag nagbabasa tayo ng Bible? Jesus, the son of David, the son of Abraham, and then pagdating mo sa verse 6, David, uh, Jesus, the son of Solomon, by the wife of Uriah. Ni hindi binanggit yung pangalan ni Batsiba. And in emphasize na yung si Batsiba ay asawa ni Uriah. And for us to see kung gaano kaskandalos yung lineage na pinanggalingan ng Panginoong Heso Kristo. And out of that scandalous sin na ginawa ni David came about God's outrageous grace for us sinners. Na merong anak ni David ang umako ng lahat ng ating kasalanan. Wala siyang kasalanan kahit isa. Ni hindi siya tumingin ng mahalay sa isang babae. He was perfectly pure. Ni hindi siya pumatay. Ni hindi siya nagtanim ng galit kahit sa kanyang mga kaaway. He was perfect love. Perfect mercy. Pero at the cross, itinuring siya ng Diyos na isang adulterer for adulterers like us, na isang murderer for murderers like us, na isang idolater for, his, for adulterers, idolaters like us. Itinuring siyang makasalanan bagamat wala siyang kasalanan para sa atin ang mga kas- makasalanan so that God will look at us as a man after God's own heart. That's the gospel. That's the good news. Na kahit gaano kalaki yung kasalanan na nagawa mo, you are totally, freely, and completely forgiven because of the blood of Jesus. Na, hindi mo na kailangan na, hindi mo na kailangan tumingin sa, ibang pang, when you look at your sin, parang, malit lang naman eh, envy, laziness lang naman eh. You look at the cross and see and use that as a standard kung gaano kalaki ang kasalanan mo sa Diyos. The cross is a measure how great a sinner we are before God. And then kung ngayon, you are overwhelmed na alam mo marami kang kasalanan, alam mo you're still struggling with sin, and take heart. Also, look at the cross. Kasi at the cross, it's also a measure kung gaano kalaki yung pag-ibig ng Diyos sa atin. Na the blood of Jesus has covered every sin, every shame. Wala na tayong dapat ikatakot when we confess our sins. So we can confess our sins to our wives, we can confess our sins to our fellow pastors, our brothers. And we can admit na tayo din ay great sinners before God. Sabi ni Paul Tripp, Pastor, there's nothing in you. So wala kang dapat ikatakot. There's nothing in you. Yes, risky, yung confession. There's nothing in you that could ever be exposed that is not already covered by the blood of Jesus. Hindi mo kailangan pagtakpan, hindi mo kailangan pagtrabawan. You no longer need to prove yourself. We rely on Christ finish performance on the cross on our behalf. And that's the good news. And maybe some of you, napang feeling ninyo na nadapa kayo sa kasalanan, parang nasubsub na yung mukha ninyo sa kasalanan, eh, parang hindi na kayo makabangon, you feel so guilty, you feel so ashamed, you feel na wala nang hope sa'yo for, for ministry. Do you know the end of the story sa so chapter 12? Ano yung start ng story natin? David remained at Jerusalem habang merong war. And then at the end of the story, 
They're still fighting against Rabbah, yung mga Ammonites. David went into battle with his men, and they won the battle. And they returned to J Jerusalem. Pinatawad siya ng Diyos, pinalaya tayo ng Diyos sa mga kasalanan natin, ipinangon tayo ng Diyos, we have experiences of free grace, mercy, and forgiveness. So we fight. Tuloy ang laban natin sa kasalanan. Because we know we have victory in Jesus. And so we fight, brothers. Yes, we are great sinners. But also, we have a great Savior. Kahit na yung headline nung kinuwento ko sa inyo kanina, 15 legendary pastors who fell from grace, the world can talk about falling from grace, but we pastors, we Christians who are in Christ, can only find confidence of falling into grace over and over again. Because we have a God, we have a Father, who won't ever, ever let us go. So let's pray. Our Father in Heaven, na ito po kami na mga makasalanan, na naligtas dahil sa biyaya mo. Patuloy na nakikipaglaban sa kasalanan dahil sa pamagitan ng biyaya mo. And we are confident that we are going to finish this race as we look to Jesus the author and finisher of our faith. Tulungan mo po kami, Panginoon, na magkakapatid kay Kristo na lumaban sa kasalanan to admit our sins and to experience more of your grace and mercy for us every day. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.